I know that Glenn Doherty was a great, would, would you say best yeah. friend of yours? Or Yeah, it was. I met him weeks before Benghazi happened. No, Glenn him. and I go way back to SEAL qualification training, and we were in the same platoon together. Then we were the two new guys that were selected um, because we we're uh, the better shots in the platoon that our ch chief uh, Dan came to us said you guys are gonna go to sniper school and it and as new guys in the SEAL community that wasn't that wasn't a thing normally that happened to new guys you had to do a deployment and get some experience hey, which which Dan, Dan, Dan can you say his last name I don't Did think he I work at Blackwater or anything like that I, I just... don't think Dan worked at Blackwater okay his last name starts with a G okay um, and yeah, he was a corpsman yeah, you're gotcha, gotcha, I'm thinking yeah, of when Chris Beck was on the show and said "Dirty Dan." Is that the same? <clears throat> Dirty, I, yeah, I can say Sam Simpson. Dirty Dan Simpson. Yeah, no, he was different he, Dan. Different Dan. Okay, yeah, different I, Dan. I, I much he taught. I mean, <laughs> he was a fucking great shooter. Dude yeah. taught me a lot about shooting. And my my <laughs> Dan did too. Our Dan was amazing. <laughs> Must be the name, dude. Yeah. But um, so yeah, Glenn and I went to sniper school. Like lived in the freaking you know dirt mud and piss together for three months <laughs> did a platoon together a whole work 18 month workup cycle together um we both love the water and snow sports you know he came to my dad i have a really fun story maybe i'll tell you after chris left it um <laughs> one one of glenn's friends um that stayed with my dad in wyoming when he was in wyoming because we used to go to my dad's house and ski glenn and i would go ski grand targi um and this this friend uh the short version he's he my dad I say, hey, dad, one of Glenn's friends coming through. Can he stay at the house and ski? Yeah, yeah. Well, the guy got so, f so shit faced the night before, like hit on my dad's neighbor, got in a fight with the, <laughs> one of the neighbors. And then my dad comes down. One of my fr dad's friends is going to take the take this guy skiing. And he knocks on the door. No one answers. He opens the door and he's hit by this like sewage smell. And the guy had literally was in the kitchen, passed out, pants around the ankles, and had shit all over my dad's kitchen floor. Oh. My dad is like, hey, none of your buddies are coming here ever again. Like, <laughs> like this is wild, man. Like, uh, but anyway, yeah, Glenn and I were, were, were very close. We, uh, I had talked about him, or I talked to him about uh, soft rep uh, because he was supposedly going to Libya, it was going to be one of his last deployments. He'd and that's been, what Sean Lake said on the show with us. Yeah, that yeah, he said, yeah, like, this is yeah, it. Yeah. And I was, Sean and was living in Glenn's house in Encinitas, and we were in Glenn's backyard talking about this. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was super tragic. And again, like the whole way, the, just the timing of that and the, I mean, I was traumatized by it. I mean, his, his, uh, ex-girlfriend who faked that she was a fiance at the funeral you know tried to freaking come on to me when i was sleeping in his bed in the house like it was just all sorts of crazy shit and, and then like jumped on the the hate brandon bandwagon after i i left i i just i got my my truck and drove home at like two in the morning um and just like all the media and the drama and everything it was it was tough man i i called i don't know if sean told you this but i'd found out through one of my friends at the agency, because I heard the rumors on, and all his friends, like Sean included, was like, hey, what's going on with Glenn? And I'm like, oh, I heard it's State Department guys. Like, and Glenn doesn't work for the State Department. Um, and then I got into my Land Cruiser in the parking lot of San Diego Airport, they had that long-term long parking, and I texted my friend, <clears throat> and he was like, hey, I'll call you in five minutes. It's not good. And then I just knew, and then he told me, um, and I cried for 20 minutes and then I called Sean and then Sean didn't believe me. He's like, look, I can hear it in your voice. Um, and I was like, dude, you're going to get a knock at the door. I was like, just call me. And then he called me back, I think 30 minutes later. And it was, it was like terrible media were camped out. It's like, no, just terrible. Like six in the morning camped out at the house. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to add, cause that's, you know, we didn't get it. We, of course we were all still working and we were at home yet, but how did that, is that, what happened because that's what i heard and i just never corroborated it corroborated it how did the media i mean they knew right then and they were there like they 24 were... hours like after the incident oh yeah even, or, it was wow. it was instantaneous like i <clears throat> by the time i drove up to encinitas i think i went home and i went to see sean they were already there wow. um 
and they were just and then like knocking on the door the next morning at 6 a.m the local news trucks just try it reminds me of that song dirty laundry by don henley it's like these made up beautiful women with the freaking mic and the phone and the camera and the lights and you know yeah. just ready for the juicy drama news story um, and so I just helped Sean fend him off. Was and, Sean with his wife at the time? Because I know Sean's no, wife is a reporter. So no, he was. He was. Um, I. He may have been engaged to Heather, um, but she was for sure like a serious girlfriend at the time. Because um, I'm like she'd be able to handle. These no, was she? Right? Well, so. she couldn't want to. She didn't want to get involved because she definitely helped. Heather was extremely helpful as well, and and she, her, and I kind of handled the blocking and tackling uh, around the media. And so I lived at the house a few days and until until the nightmare ex-girlfriend like hit on me. And then um, then I just stayed stayed out of the house. But uh, yeah, it was um, but that's that's how it happened. It was because of the, you know, the second Obama election. It was highly politicized, as Chris knows more than anybody. And yeah, it was just and I had lost my best friend and I'm like dealing with with the press and, and everything. It was, it was tough. It was like a tough time. It took me a couple of years to get over that. I think that was harder, harder for me. And also because being friends and Chris knows this about Glenn, I don't think there's a person that would ever say a bad thing about Glenn. He just had that personality to him um, where I look at my own self and, and in the community, like I figure I consider myself a good operator. I did a great job, but, but I either you you really liked me or you fucking hated me because I, I I was I mean I was the head of the instructor school I had to send guys home you know and and I remember Eric Davis would be like hey man I got I got the student failed but can you have the talk with him I'm like yeah send him on my office it's like dude you didn't meet the standard get the pack your shit and get out of here and you know and you don't get win a lot of friends that yeah. that way but I was just like cut and dry but Glenn just had a way about him that. Every, everyone loved the guy and being his friend was like armor it was armor for me because he would just take it was like freaking <laughs> a chest plate you know yeah. he was very yeah. protective that way and when i lost glenn i lost i lost that and yeah i didn't have i didn't have my fucking body armor anymore to be honest yeah, I just, so, uh, yeah I, I i do remember when they came in when they finally got to our place and and the movie actually did a great job showing that. And I remember because I did. I was like, "Hey, fuckers, welcome to the party! Finally here!" And yeah. <laughs> I remember the team leader, great guy. Not not our team leader from our base, but our country team leader who was a former force recon guy and was a contractor that went to went to the blue side. Great guy. And him and Glenn both looked up at me and went like this. Just like, <laughs> Tom, it's, and it's, yeah. it's like, yeah, they're they're here. <laughs> like, yeah, oh my yeah. God. And, but that you know, even then, even him flipping me off still made me smile if that yeah. tells you anything about glenn no right? that's and glenn it, it yeah like, and after what it was what the fourth firefight we'd been in and uh it's just one of those things like yeah these guys yep they know it's me glenn's flipped me off but i know he's happy to be here and yeah. he knows he's like tano just shut the f-. i know he's saying that in his breath tano shut the f- up yeah there you yeah. <laughs> but but, yeah. Uh, but you know how did how did you with the media and all that how did i i think they're for being there right then, I mean, just no fucking ethics, no integrity. How did, how did you fend them off, and how did you do that without losing your shit, without just going? I, I, I don't know how I could, I couldn't. Do I, that. I mean, I think what helped is I was working in the media, and I had friends in the media like Buck Sexton, Will, sure. Andrew yeah. Wilkow, yeah. Um, and so I knew, I just knew, like, look, that they're just essentially doing their job, and albeit it sucks. Is that how uh, they rationalize it, though? Is I'm that, sure I'm they. I mean, I, I'm guessing. I mean, they, come on. But yeah, it's just. Look, I mean, I've experienced it in the media. I mean, I, it, yeah. it goes back to the. I don't know when Don Henley wrote "Dirty Laundry." <laughs> probably in the yeah, '70s. I mean, but he's like, she'll tell you about the plane crash with a gleam in her eye. They're just, you know, give me that dirty laundry, and and that's they want to be the first to break the story, and and they're kind of clawing their way up the local news ranks to go national. So I mean, think of after school shootings, right? I yeah, mean, they're yeah, dealing with children who and, are experiencing the most traumatizing event. And hey, do you want to go on with Anderson Cooper? Yeah. You're like that's that's how they work. So. And, and 
It's why Look, I really don't like doing mainstream, you know, and and I consider all, I mean, Newsmax, Fox News, they're all in the same category to no, me. Yeah, really, yeah, so. yeah. No, it's, yeah. And, and I think the media and, and government in America need to change. Like, I think we need drastic overhaul of our political system um and the media has to do the same i mean we saw the media change at 9 11 it, it was when it became a 24 7 feed yeah, the machine yeah. news cycle yeah. and you know how back to your question chris I, I think i just i understood the media and and i just was like firm and and would just tell them to fuck off over and over i was told like they would yeah come and knock 30 minutes later like look it's the same answer you know it'd be somewhat different but um it was it was tough um but um you know and i i remember the funeral too like i love glenn glenn didn't want a funeral he put it in his will specifically we did it for his mom barbara and i'll mention this i mean yeah. you know and sean yeah. has mentioned on the show like you guys paid for the funeral not the yeah. state department yeah yeah that yeah. and that was that really pissed me off chris like i was angry about that because I, I was gonna can you go in because i was gonna ask you about that because yeah. i knew we all knew that happened we, yeah. we were also working but we knew that the state department agency was they weren't doing they weren't doing we already we already saw the writing on the wall they were gonna do shit for us and yeah. we knew so and, and what can, what made it that. what made it worse was that i saw the family paraded around the white house um and, and i think this is i th i think i get this right when i say um, Glenn's sister used to be super liberal and you know they got after the family got invited to the White House your son your brother's a hero they kind of had their press moment then they just cast the family off and that's when I think the family were like oh wow we're like they just don't give a shit anymore they don't. <laughs> and and then I remember Sean and I having this conversation and he was saying look this was after we went to Boston for the funeral. Um, he's like, look, Barbara's stressed out. Like she had to cover all the costs, like 50,000. I'm like, okay, where's the life insurance money? Yeah. Where's the government? Cause the government, the family told me that when they went to the white house, they say, don't worry about a thing. We're going to take care of everything. And they, and that was like, you know, Hillary Clinton saying that stuff. And it was just f terrible. And I was f livid and, and especially, because then we started getting sources. We had a source with inside the State Department, an ex-military officer, that gave us Ambassador Stevens' personal diary, like in, and was telling us like this was they were trying to cover up accountability around Benghazi, and that made it even worse for me. And I was like, that they're trying to cover it up. They're fucking the family over. This guy's a hero. I don't care yeah. who you want to vote for. This guy like gave his life for the country, and you can't even help his family bury him. Like the mom is like stressed out because you know it was something around fifty, sixty thousand dollars in funeral expenses, yeah. and so yeah, me and his friends paid for it. But I was pissed, and and then you know Sean, hats off to Sean and the family. Like they went after the agency, and I th I think it was uh, who was the. CIA director, Chris, do you remember? Uh, it, at that time, it was, well, when it happened, it was Petraeus, and then it went to Brennan. To Brennan, yeah. And, and Sean told me the story. They went to the CIA, and Brennan's aide, whatever, pointed out the fine print in the life insurance contract. He's like, look, you made the guy pay for life insurance. You mandated they pay for life insurance. Yeah. And then you're going to point to the fine print. It reminds me of these like Netflix, HBO <laughs> privacy statements we yeah. sign. We don't even know what we're signing. Yeah. Um, and and you're not going to you're going to not pay on a technicality. And, and he just said, look, there's right and there's wrong. And this is just wrong. And then he ended up the CIA paid not the full policy, but they ended up getting a lot of money and a lot of other families, I think hundreds of families that were in similar situations left totally hanging by the government. They got paid also. So that that's the silver lining in this. And that's what, that's what I know Glenn would be smiling down from heaven going, okay, yeah, you, there's some good that came out of this. Like you helped, you helped a lot of families. And so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was, I was extremely pissed um and going after that book that jack and i wrote the benghazi report i remember jack's like yeah. we can't say definitive report he's like well actually until uh, chris wrote his book it was a definitive report <laughs> um he's like i guess I, it I, was 
Yeah, I forgot. I, I, I know I read it. We, Me and Jack Silva it, in that Jack's a suit. Yeah. If I told you Jack's real name, you may, you probably know it. You, you'll know, you know yeah. him. Well, you would probably I can't know say already, it here. right? I can't, so. I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. say I it gotcha. here, but Brandon, I, I know you know who it is. Um, yeah, that was it. We were in Yemen though. I remember. And, and uh, yeah, I remember we were like, are you, and we saw Jack came into my room and he's like, that mother, he, Brandon, I'll tell you exactly. <laughs> yeah. He goes, that mother f- <laughs> like, what? He goes, they're already wrote in a book. I said, what book? We're, we just, we just got back. We're, we're both, we both went to uh, Sanaa <laughs> and, and I was like, oh shit. And this is before, this is when the yeah, soft rep was the only thing out there. You know? yeah. And, and, and you guys, yeah, I'll tell you what, we, we, I know we're going full circle here, but you guys do eat, eat your own. You really do. I mean, Rangers, we kind of do, but the I, seals I you're talking about admit we yeah seals you yeah. guys are no and, it's bad and, it's really and, bad it, it it's it is bad it's worse it's worse than range battalion it, and range actually we do we do pretty much take care of each other for the most part we'll have some every once in a while but but um yeah i was like he's like what how the book come out already we just got, we it's, it's it's not even been three months we're back, yeah. we're back i remember the book. by the way chris do you have to go because i know i know you have <laughs> yeah, to peace out soon bitch. there's I, so much I, other I, stuff I, we can get to but but i remember yeah, the book well, was like you, Jack, and I think Corey Alanis, right? I can't say his real name. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we wrote. He was awesome, by the we way. We wrote man. the book yeah. very fast. Harper Collins but, published it. It was a New York Times it, bestselling ebook. Like was, and, and honestly, you know, we did read it. I, I, I was a long time ago, so I don't remember the specifics. But it, it, when I read it, I, it was hard for me to be too pissed. Because first of all, I wasn't a seal, so I'm not going to eat my. I'm not. That's your. That's <laughs> yeah. you guys. You guys. That's your. Well, house, Jack was so one of the school. authors, so you could be mad but, at him. But, but, but uh, but it was also, yeah. Really, it was like, well, they really didn't get any. It it was pre, it was pretty tame in my from knowing. Yeah, what I mean, it happened. was it was. It pe- wasn't it was it wasn't over the top. You yeah. didn't. I didn't. I don't remember any embellishing. Going no, on. no, no. And we just, didn't. We didn't write the book to make money, or we wrote the book as a because they were covering the story up yeah. and driving a different narrative. And, and it was partly, I was, I was pissed and I'm like, they, the, the story needs to come out and somebody needs to get held accountable. Patrick Kennedy, who I don't think to this day Holy has, there, has been I'm held glad accountable. You, that piece of him and, yeah, no, we, Lamb and we put fucking... that out there. We're like, look, you can be mad at Hillary Clinton, but the true kind of villain here is Patrick Kennedy. Yes. And, yep. and the, the motivation was to get the foundation of the story out there um, it, it, from a journalism, journalistic point of view, and, and it accomplished that. Like we got, we were on freaking news two weeks in a row. Jack and I were on live news every night. And, and it's like if you guys weren't there, who's going to be there? Yeah, Somebody nobody. Has no and, idea what. And that's the thing; about. nobody had it. That's why Jack and I were on on headline news every night. Hannity, you name it. Um, even NPR had us on um, because we were telling the the story and the, and mostly about. People had no idea who Patrick Kennedy was and that he was just, you know, people at the State Department were screaming for help and increased security. Um, and, and so, yeah, we wanted we wanted to get the story out. 